Hey guys, what's up? Zako1017 here and Half-Life 2 doing the Stanley Parable mod. Uh, there's no ending, there's, uh, let's see, no ending, no winning, no losing. It's pretty much just like, uh, you do this, do that. It's pretty cool, it's all sandbox and everything, so I hope you guys enjoy this, and let's start. Start new game with my loud mouse. Also guys, I have a new kind of Hunter first video special. Sorry guys, I didn't do a Hunter video special, but I was, I forgot, I was uploading so much. So go check out that Kamikaze with the VTOL, it's pretty funny. I did it with my friend Sal and Monster. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Wow. Wow. Okay. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to oh hold. God. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Okay, so we're walking down. Let me just increase the sensitivity. And turn on the volume a little bit. Oh, sensitivity. And looks like we're Stanley. And something has gone wrong with the company. Let's see what is wrong. Oh, let's see. Wow, so you just press P? Wow, this is a horrible job. Come on, Stanley. That's Stanley some decency. decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Okay, so let's try to find it. Oh, God, this is horrible. Everyone has this little room. Oh, this is horrible. Am I in here? Hello? Oh god, everyone's dead. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Right side. Just can. Oh Jesus. Oh! Oh god. Please be going the right way. A little faster, Stanley. Come on. Hello? Eh? I don't want to go in. Ugh! Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. So nobody's in the room, this is weird, and this building must be huge, I mean, it's probably like... Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. So I can ruin the whole thing right now, oh, oh no. Why does it keep having noise here? Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It oh. was at this point that he began to feel dizzy. What? No, no, uh, no, no. And even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. <gasps> Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this. Since the panel withheld access to the oh boss's god, he's been eating the people. Secret. And so he had assigned the keypad, a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. But of course, Stanley couldn't... <laughs> oh, this is funny. Yet incredibly, by <laughs> pushing random buttons on the keypad, oh, Stanley so happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. 
Amazing. <laughs> Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. This is pretty cool so far. I like this. As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... <gasps> oh God, they're watching us. Rows ...and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Hey, that's mine. Stanley noticed, however, that these <coughs> were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers, even his own number, 427, Hello. had a place on the wall. But why is... Sorry, I just need it closest down. Damn it. Set up there we so go. Elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? Oh, God. And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open. Hey, open, what's up? Revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. Oh, no. An enormous control panel Stanley discovered but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. What the Beavers hell? Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. Oh, God. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it? That's how they make so many funny people. He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. Oh no. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, oh, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room. Climb the ladder. The Which one? Which button? Oh god. Am I supposed to climb again? Which button though? This one? I'm gonna click it. No, this one. Uh, this. It's broken? What is it? This is weird. Oh, the rafters in the back. Okay. So I probably just messed something up. Okay. Closer he felt to freedom. Hello. The further from enslavement. Up the ladder. There we go. I should go this way. Oh no. Which way? Disable. I must destroy the machine. We must have our freedom. Oh yay, yes. Oh no. Hello? Is this the door? Blackness. Power gone. Is this Power the door? Known. And then Oh <gasps> Freedom As he stepped through the door into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's. And then the combine attacked and he's dead. He had seen power. He had seen enslavement. And he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Yes, yeah, Stanley is powerful. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses. <gasps> no more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And he stepped out into the world. 
and he felt the cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was truly was happy. happy. <laughs> Stanley, I'm so happy for you. And then it happened. Hmm. Are we done? Okay, so I think that now we can, uh, what is it? We skip these? Just say, I'm just gonna wait. That was pretty cool. I think we actually we can uh, now choose a different path. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue with that, and I'll come back when we're at the option of the two doors. So I'll see you guys. No, 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 I still.